Okay, in this video we're going to uh, create the Sudoku game and we're going to do that in Visual Basic. And so one of the first things I started to do was just to look at the interface. Um, so I need to design the interface for a good Sudoku board and how to manage buttons and so forth. I look no farther than the Sudoku.com and I thought, yeah, that's a pretty well thought out interface. So I'm going to try to do something similar in Visual Basic. So first off, I need to have some text boxes. Well, with the text boxes, one of the things I'm going to need to do is make it multi-line. So I'm going to put a text box on here and I'm going to go to the multi-line property and I'm going to need to make multi-line true and I need to size it and I played around with some size because I wanted to make it so um, if I run it I can put some notes in uh, of the different numbers um, that I might want to select so for example on the online one you had one two three uh, four five six seven eight uh, oops and nine had to all fit and you can see this one is too small to fit all nine I can only do six because of the padding and so forth in the cell even though you could think it might fit uh, seven eight nine underneath four five six I can't quite so I'm gonna change it and I played around and I found that uh, a size of um, uh, 36 by 45 uh, was pretty pretty well the smallest I could go to use the default font that would fit nicely. Um, one of the other things I wanted to do is uh, play around with some other settings such as the, um, the different styles but I can do that uh, later. So play around and, and make it and then I figured I'm going to need uh, nine of these in a row so I copied and pasted uh, text box two and I used the align tool uh, just to line them up and text box three and try to make them uh, even and now I need a bit more of a gap um, so I'm going to do text box uh, four text box five text box six and so forth so I'm going to need 81 of these and um, yeah that's where we'll go okay now that I have 81 uh, text boxes it's time to start doing some programming but before I do some programming I want to talk a little bit about something called an array and so far up to this point we've used variables and variables tend to hold just a single value at a time that we've used and with this approach many separate value uh, variables are required to represent a collection of items of uh, items that are similar and what I'd like to do is introduce something called an array. And so if I had a variable called student names, um, imagine this box here is my variable called student names. And what I can do is I can create it as an array that has multi-values. So in this case, I'm going to uh, make it have four different values. So for example, imagine if I had the variable student names and in student names, I might uh, put in uh, one of the uh, places I might put in something uh, such as uh, the name um, uh, Maya. I might put in another in another student might be uh, Alicia. Uh, another student might be Aaron. Another student might be Bob. And another student might be Bill. And so this way I can have the same variable student names and I can get at the different uh, elements uh, with what is called an index value and the elements of an array have an index value with zero being the index of the first item one being the index of the second item and so on so in this above example you'll see I've created student names uh, and index zero student names zero would equal um, Maya. So for example, if I was to uh, write this in Visual Basic, the code would look something like the following. Um, we would use the dim statement to declare the variable. 
we would then give the variable a name. Um, we give it a maximum, we have to tell it how many items. So I put in parentheses the number of items and then declare it as a data type. In this case, if they're names, obviously a string would be the appropriate data type. And then if I want to assign it uh, some values, what I could do is I could say um, string student names and item number zero uh, could equal Maya, for example, and string student names one could equal Alicia, for example, and that would work really well. One of the nice things about using uh, an array is we can get the computer to automate a task to go through the entire array. And to do that, we often use things such as loops. And a typical loop could be something like uh, for index equals zero to four. Um, and then you could do something. So if you're doing a loop to search for a name, I could do something like if index, um, if, sorry, string student names uh, index. So as it loops through, it's going to go to index zero. If index zero is equal to Alicia, oops, I'll use a shorter name. Try Aaron. Oh, I'll need to make my text box bigger here. There you go. So if uh, it's equal to Aaron, uh, then what I could do is I could say found. And so it's, if I imagine if I had a list of a thousand, it'd be a quick way to sort of search through a thousand to see if I have an item. Well, we're going to do the same thing in uh, here, but this time I want to create a control as an array. So to do that, we need to do some things that are slightly different. So here we are in my Sudoku uh, game board that I'm making in Visual Basic and what I need to do to make an array of controls is you'll see I've got a whole slew of controls 81 uh, buttons and it starts or text boxes and it starts as text box 1 then 2 then 3 then 4 5 etc so I'm gonna add a button here and I'm gonna uh, take all these text boxes that are unique and I'm going to dump them all into an array. I'll show you how we do that. First off, in the general declarations, I'm going to declare my control array and I'll call it uh, Sudoku uh, array. And I'm going to declare it as a text box. Huh. So it's not a string, it's not an integer, rather it's a text box. And then what I'm going to do is in button one, I'm going to assign um, this array, all 81 of these. Oops, I didn't uh, put 81 there. So I declare Sudoku array and I size it to being 81. And their type is going to be, they're going to be declared as text boxes. And then when I press the button, I'm going to put um, Sudoku array one is equal to text box one and Sudoku array two is equal to text box two. And what is nice about that is um, now that I've uh, done that, I can uh, get to um, making another button that can do something to all of them. So for example, suppose I wanted to change the background color of all the text boxes at once. I would normally have to go text box one uh, dot background color equals color blue and then text box two and I'd have to do that over and take 81 lines of code just to do that Let me put another button just to show you how easy uh, It is to change the color of all the text boxes and what I would do is I would uh, merely say uh, Sudoku array um, Item index dot color, uh, background color rather, uh, is equal to color uh, blue. Or, yeah, there's blue. And so, um, what is the index? Well, easy enough. Uh, we'll declare a variable 
index as an integer and it's going to equal 1 to 81 and as we go through the loop it's there's 81 lines of code so let's try it out and see if it works so I'm gonna press play and you're gonna see I'm gonna load the array so I click button 1 and then button 2 I turn them all blue now you'll see this sub uh, button 1 would make a lot more sense because I'm gonna to want to do it every time the game starts I'm gonna to want to set up my array it would make a lot more sense instead of clicking the button is to put it in something like a form load so I'm gonna do that next so it's automatically loaded up with um, uh, so instead of a button event that was actually not very wise it would be a lot smarter to go to a form event uh, such as when the form loads so I'll go to form load and in form load I'd load up my array so I only have to do that once assign each one and then what I could do is I could uh, um, place something in each of the items uh, let me show you one last example of what I could do so for example uh, if I had an array I could uh, well let's just I'll run the program and show you so here form loads it loaded them all up you'll see I've got each button is the same I can uh, have enough room to put my uh, potential codes in and then I could click on a button and it could color them all a certain color okay one last thing I want to show you before I finish here is to make my Sudoku game look a little better what I decided to do was draw a graphic of the grid and so what I eventually did is I took a screen capture of where my text boxes were and uh, using something like the snipping tool so uh, I did something like this I went new and I just did a screen capture so I knew the size of the grid and then what I did is I uh, dumped black paint on it and so here's my graphic and so I use a picture box and I put the graphic on and then I uh, just line it up and put it over here now one of the issues uh, when you put it over it's going to cover over top so what I had to do is not only did I have to place it in the exact right spot that I wanted it but I also had to uh, right click on it and send the picture box send it to the back so it was behind the text boxes so that way when I run the program the text boxes uh, you'll see I can still click in the text box and the text box is behind okay uh, next thing I want to show you is I wanted to make a clear button the reason I want a clear button is again to show you just how useful the loop can be as I go and I color things and I change the fonts and all sorts of things I might want to change what the contents are so I made a button just to demonstrate how easy it is and clear I declare a variable called index uh, I loop index from 1 to 81 and then I can set properties such as Sudoku array index dot text equals uh, blank so it's going to be cleared I could change the font by saying Sudoku index dot font equals new font and I said let's do the default Microsoft Sans Serif 8.25 and font style regular I could even uh, make it all white by going Sudoku array uh, index uh, dot let's say the back color uh, equals color um, white I think that's the default um, and uh, there you have it oh Sudoku um, is uh, colored white and so now I can have a clear button so when I uh, press play if I load it up a Sudoku board um, into the array uh, I can go clear and that would clear everything 